Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the Psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the Dewey Reims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Reims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 25 in the Dewey Reims Bible, but Psalm 26 in the RSV. Unto the end, a Psalm for David. Brief context for this psalm. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my innocence, and I have put my trust in the Lord, and shall not be weakened. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Burn my reins and my heart. This part is a challenge for God to put our innocence to the test, to show that we won't turn away from him, or even lose strength in our commitment to him. Very few people can say this honestly. For thy mercy is before my eyes, and I am well pleased with thy truth. I'm happy to know the truths of God, and I like those truths. This is a good position to hold, because no matter what the truth may be, truth guides us well, and falsehood guides us poorly. I have not sat with the counsel of vanity, neither will I go in with the doers of unjust things. I don't associate with worldly people, or with people who bring about injustice. This is not for the purpose of punishing evildoers ourselves, but in order to keep ourselves from being tempted to act like them. I have hated the assembly of the malignant, and with the wicked I will not sit. I will wash my hands among the innocent, and will compass thy altar, O Lord, that I may hear the voice of thy praise, and tell of all thy wondrous works. I don't want to spend my time with evildoers. I can't stand being around them, and for the same reasons I want to be with holy people who do the right thing, worshipping God and talking about the good things he's done. The fact is, evildoers are constantly trying to find ways to undermine, weaken, pervert, or destroy what's good. And a person who listens to the guidance of God will learn the value of good things, and that they should be treasured and appreciated. I have loved, O Lord, the beauty of thy house, and the place where thy glory dwelleth. Because this was written in the time of David, the phrase, thy house, probably refers to the tabernacle that housed the Ark of the Covenant. It might also refer to the Ark itself, but very few people were permitted to see it, so statements about its beauty would be a bit unlikely. Take not away my soul, O God, with the wicked, nor my life with bloody men in whose hands are iniquities, their right hand is filled with gifts. Evildoers tempt people by offering them rewards, but their goals are still evil, and associating with them causes harm and death. But as for me, I have walked in my innocence, Redeem me, and have mercy on me. My foot hath stood in the direct way. In the churches I will bless thee, O Lord. Pay attention to me, save me, and protect me, because I avoid those terrible evils that others keep trying to tempt me into. This psalm is a mix of pleas for help and protection, as well as protestations of innocence. It's the prayer of a person who lives their faith and is eager to escape the fate that he sees wicked people falling into, to a life of success and happiness that only God can offer. I'll do more psalms at some point in the future, but next season we'll go over a few more comments and special requests for video topics, beginning with the question, is there art in heaven? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.